Welcome to Greg's Corner on the Diana Photography Channel. I am Greg and I am the guy chasing after Diana as her cameraman while she is hiking on mountains. In my spare time I like to do wildlife and macro photography. I specifically like to photograph insects in nature, finding species that I have never seen before, then trying to figure out what kind they might be. I have been using the Z50, the Z6 and the Z7 with the old 105mm Nikkor macro lens and I was never disappointed with the results. Although it is not the sharpest lens, it shows a fair amount of chromatic aberrations, has a bit of veiling and doesn't have the most contrast wide open, for the type of photography I am doing it always worked pretty well. I normally use slower apertures like f16 and f22 and do not take many focus stacked images since I can never know whether my live subjects get scared and run off after the first time the flash goes off. The old F-Man Nikkor sharpened up nicely at those smaller effective apertures, chromatic aberrations were kept in check and the deeper depths of field suited my photography. But then after a long wait Nikon introduced the new Z MC 105mm VRS lens and I hoped that I could finally replace the F-mount lens with its sluggish autofocus, loudly whirring VR and its firmly attached annoying companion the FTZ adapter. I am going to try and give you an evaluation of the new lens based not only on image quality but also on the aspects of everyday macro photography use. The new lens is lighter than its old counterpart weighing in at only 630 grams. Not only is it lighter but it is also more balanced and less front heavy. The F-mount lens weighs 750 grams on its own but with the FTZ adapter it quickly reaches a whopping 883 grams. Once you add the flash to your kit the difference in weight and balance becomes more pronounced in favor of the Z-mount lens. Based on the numbers it might not seem like much but you can feel it in your wrists and fingers after a long handheld session. The design is the same as all new Z-mount lenses with the old black lens body and the silver white writing. You either like this design or you don't. I like the understated minimalist design of the new Z-mount lenses, never like the flashy gold writing on the F-mount ones. The focus ring size is good and the tactile response is also very good. It is an adjustment using it after the old mechanical focus ring but the focus by wire system works perfectly and the dampening of the ring is also adequate although a bit softer than the old mechanical lens. Wrecking the focus is quick and responsive in photo mode but the behavior of the focus ring changes in video mode and the same amount of turn results in lot less focus adjustment. This seems to be by design to get a smoother focus wrecking for video. Changing AF speed and sensitivity settings in the menu does not change the behavior of the focus ring in manual video mode. Another important thing for the focus by wire system is that all the Z lenses reset the focus to infinity when a camera is turned off. This is annoying when you want it to be at 1 to 1 magnification and you do not want to rack it manually back after every startup. The setting can be changed by enabling the save focus position option in the menu. Strangely, the lens will still return to infinity when turned off and rack back to minimum focus distance when turned on. This takes around one and a half seconds since the focus row of the lens is huge and this process gets highlighted more. It is even visible on the back LCD. Other Z-mount lenses do it too, but the smaller focus row and the fast focus action hide it. The lens comes with the clickless control ring that can be customized separately for stills and video. This ring unfortunately does not have a good tactile response. It is easy to knock it and change settings without realizing, so I normally keep it turned off. It is also equipped with an OLED display and on this lens it is actually useful when for example doing tethered work in the studio with the camera being in a top down position. It can toggle between showing the focus distance, the f-stop and the magnification ratio. My only gripe with Nikon's approach is that the same focus distance and magnification data should also be displayed in the EVF and on the back LCD. This would allow the photographer to keep the camera up to the eye. Since the digital information is right there in the lens, it should be easy to implement this in firmware on all the Z cameras. You also get a customizable function button that can be assigned various functions. I like to have the zoom option assigned to it. 
You get two switches, one for auto and manual focus and one for the focus limiter. The focus limiter switch is different from the one on the F-mount lens. It limits the focus to close-up distances from minimum focus to 0.5 meters or gives you the full focus range. This makes more sense than the old method and the focus acquisition is a lot faster at macro distances as the lens does not try to go to infinity and back. Both switches are well positioned and have a good tactile response. Both these lenses are one-to-one -one magnification and have the ability to focus to infinity allowing them to be used for portraiture and other types of photography. This is in line with other manufacturers offerings, most competitors make macro lenses with similar specifications. For higher magnification ratios you have to look at third-party manufacturers like Lauva or have to apply a few tricks. I really hoped that Nikon would be bolder with the new design and would give us a lens that can go to 2 to 1 magnification but they unfortunately did not push the envelope. The new lens is not compatible with teleconverters so extension tubes and macro conversion lenses are the only way to go beyond 1 to 1 magnification but I will get back to this point later. The image quality of the Z lens is spectacular in all aspects. It has better transmission than the F-mount lens wide open at infinity focus and also at 1 to 1 magnification. This is also visible with the effective aperture being 4.5 for the Z-mount lens instead of the 4.8 on the F-mount one. It beats out the F-mount lens in sharpness, contrast and also on color reproduction wide open. The new lens seems to be perfectly corrected for color aberrations and is sharp from the center right to the outer edges. Stop down to my usual f16 and 22 apertures, the lens does not lose any sharpness. At these apertures, although the F-mount lens is closer to the new lens's sharpness and the chromatic aberrations are also gone, the difference is still visible. Here are a few images taken of live insects and flowers to showcase the beautiful image quality, color rendition and focus fall of characteristics of the lens. These images were taken with the Z6, Z7 full frame cameras and the Z50 APS-C camera and are meant to show you what the 1 to 1 magnification means for certain insect sizes. As you can see the size of a bee or a fly nicely fills the frame and you can see the smallest details like the hair on their body. Smaller insects like an ant will be too small in frame even at 100% zoom. I framed up this image specifically to show the focus fall of characteristics of the new lens. Unfortunately the bee's head is not in perfect focus as it just slightly tilted its body when I took the shot but the image is a good example of the out of focus rendering of the lens. The bokeh is smooth and not intrusive at all. And this gets me to the only negative thing about the lens's performance, distortion. Unlike on the F-mount version, distortion seems to be corrected mostly with software in camera, which means if you try to use extension tubes to get more magnification out of the lens, these software corrections do not work anymore and the better distortion of the lens seems to get magnified even more to the extent that the edges of the frame are useless. Combining this behavior together with the previously mentioned incompatibility with teleconverters makes this lens not suitable for higher magnification work or using teleconverters to get a lot larger working distance at 1 to 1 magnifications for skittish insects. The working distance of the Z lens at 1 to 1 magnification is 13.7 cm, which is very comparable to the old lens's 15.5 cm, but the old lens's ability to use teleconverters allows the working distance to become around 35.5 cm with a 2 times teleconverter and 21.5 cm with a 1.7 times teleconverter or gives you the corresponding magnifications of 2 to 1 and 1.7 to 1 respectively at minimum focus distance. These two images are just to show this with a tiny spider I found sitting on a flower pot on our balcony with a grey sunshade as background. These are of course not artistic images, they are just to demonstrate the increased usability teleconverters could have offered the new lens. In my opinion this is a wasted opportunity on Nikon's behalf as those additional capabilities would have come in handy for macro photography and Nikon could have sold lots of teleconverters with it. 
The new ZMC 105mm f2.8 VRS lens has beautiful color rendition, is the sharpest lens that I have ever owned and we own a few of the best Z mount lenses Nikon produced. If one to one magnification fulfills your needs it is a great lens for macro, food and even portrait photography. It is also a capable video lens although focus breathing on this type of lens will always cause issues that is inherent with this kind of design. If you are looking for higher than 1 to 1 magnification, you will be disappointed though and will have to stick with the old lens and your teleconverters or look at third party lenses like the Lauva 100mm f2.8 2x macro lens.